Awesome. Been a little while. Um, it was good to get out there, run around. Uh, you know, I think these kids uh, are putting in a lot of great work. Um, you guys are starting to see a little bit of the product that we put out there. We were very base, generic in a lot of things. Uh, played a lot of different bodies. Uh, saved a lot of different kids out there. So, you know, it, um, you know, it was more about just, you know, making sure that we came out healthy and running around as much as we could and uh, just get in front of some of the the fan base and, and make some plays. You know, I thought the offense, you know, did a really great job. Uh, we ended up being very limited on the defensive side. We had about 20 players out on the defensive side uh, due to some contact tracing and some injuries and just kind of holding them out. You know, um, you know, we ended up, uh, you know, getting some of these guys uh, a little banged up early and we were just being preventative just not to make sure that they, they do anything serious out there because this is the last time we will tackle this spring leading up all the way to fall camp. So, uh, but pleased with them. You know, uh, I, I thought it was a pretty entertaining uh, format. You know, when you ended at the at the end, like Tate Heitmeyer's attempt to catch a punt was pretty phenomenal to me. Uh, uh, but that that was uh, it was it was fun and entertaining for all those kids out there. But for the most part, we you know we still um, have four more practices left that we're going to knock out next week. But they're going to be controlled settings and and very limited. It's more individual based, uh, making sure that. Uh, uh, we can kind of polish up some installs and some individual work uh, leading into a good break after finals and then start up June 1st for a summer workout. So, um, you know, really like this team. I think we're getting better every single day and, uh, and, you know, looking forward to see where we take this in the fall. Questions? You mentioned 20 guys missing on defense. Do you know how many total that was, offense included, how many you were down today? It was a good amount. We were probably around 30 to 35 kids out today. Um, and you know that's just kind of where where the times are at. You know it's uh, uh, it unfortunate on some of these things. You know the the COVID protocols and and just where it's at uh, are probably a little bit more severe than what we had in the season. You know we're still dealing with a lot of false positive tests. You know so there's there's though those issues and you're never going to just question it. So you just still go through the proper protocols and and a lot of these kids set out for a long time for about two weeks. You know that you know. We're, we're healthy in their contact trace twice, <laughs> you know, so it, uh, it's the way it goes right now, man. But we're in no rush, like I've said, to get through spring. And, and we still have got a lot of quality work in. We practiced Thursday, Friday, and had a good scrimmage today, and we got four more to go, and we're putting in a lot of quality work. So, um, you know, we, we were piecing it together really in those last uh, uh, really three, two, really two, three drives. We had to start piecing that together a little bit good just to make sure that everybody was out there. Um, everybody got an opportunity to run around on Bobcat Stadium uh, in the spring game. So, uh, yeah, I had, had a lot of guys out, but, uh, you know, I still thought it was a productive day. How did that uh, two-week break play out internally? Did you know right away you guys would have to shut it down for that amount of time, or was it you we were, back? Or? You know, and, and the thing was is we, you know, we had a lot of injuries, too. We've had kids, like, get appendicitis and just, you know, random things like that, you know. Uh, shoulder separations, but they're good, and hamstring pulls, which they're back, you know. Like, and so we just paused for about two weeks. Like, you know, I was laying like DJ Mask was laying on the ground, and he normally never lays on the ground. I go out there, and I'm like, "You're doing all right." And he goes, "I don't have a sub right now. I'm just trying to take a break." <laughs> and I was like, "I'm, I'm with you, man." <laughs> you know. So there's a lot of that going on. You know, we were just trying to piece it together uh, and keep it entertaining for you guys. But uh, you know, it's. Uh, we just kind of made it work, but it's tough to sit out two weeks and then really go full speed right into something, you know. And uh, uh, we're just trying to get as much, you know, quality work and make sure that we're not wasting people's times and repping people that may not have a chance to play for us next year. So, was there a thought to moving the spring game? Was that an option? No, there's just so much in conjunction with this game. You know, we had, you know, you have the golf tournament we did yesterday that we've been putting on for like we've been working on for about eight months that brought back a ton of former players and alumni. Um, and, you know, you got the baseball game this afternoon and the softball game this afternoon. And there's just a lot of great things for our university. And it's, you know, I, I thought it turned out pretty good for a, really a beautiful day right now. And um, there was talks about it, but, you know, to us, like, you know, spring games are more for the fans and making sure that we get out healthy. And are you able to make up for all the lost practices here on the back end, or do you mm -hmm. generally lose some time because of it? No, it, you, we can pause and go. We can actually take this all the way in the June if we wanted to, close to it. You know, we pause for two more weeks, so we could actually go really close to mid-May, late May, um, if we want. But you know, there's no need for that. You know, like we're we're getting quality work in, and these kids, you know, that was uh, 
uh, really our 10th practice, kind of 11th. Like normally when you go through a spring, you're going to have about probably about 13 good practices. You know, some of them are just kind of walkthroughs for the spring game and, you know, just uh, you never really see programs go 15 really hard practices. So, you know, it's uh, we've got in the same amount of work that we would in a normal year. It's back-to-back -back seasons with kind of an unorthodox spring practice, last year being cut off after five. Has it been kind of a learning experience for you, all these wrenches thrown at you and into the mix of everything? No, I think after you go through last year's season, you know, I think you're ready for anything. You know, like uh, these kids actually, they understand it, and, you know, they just moved on. You know, like it, it's just the way it is. They understand the times. Like when you would give them, you know, the, the contact tracing, you know, element in the fall, like it was really tough on these kids. But now it's just such a, a normal, a normalcy of today's time that, you know, they just are used to it and they move on, they make the best of it and they, they know what to do. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of wrenches thrown at us, but I, I think we have a great staff. We've got, I think these kids are bought into what we're doing and they understand that, you know, we're trying to do the right things and put our kids in the best position to have success. And, and uh, you know, we, we show up every day and we just work through all the issues and problems and we, we maximize everything we possibly can. The unorthodox is now orthodox, I guess. <laughs> no, I guess that's the way to put it, yeah. You know, you had good competition from the quarterbacks out there today, McBride, Evans, Bitt. Um, it seemed like McBride really had a great day. What was your assessment of, of their spring game? Yeah, I thought all three of them played well. Um, you know, you start with Brady. I, I think his poise, he looks so much more confident and comfortable out there. You know, and I think you guys would all agree with that. You know, and that's just maturity and, and repetitions and – and uh, familiarity of you know just uh, the second year in the system. I've always told you guys the the second year um, and the system is so much easier because you get a lot of those you know rookie conversations out of the way and you don't you can actually focus on how the defense is attacking you. And um, I thought Brady just has great control of when to hand the ball off, when to throw it out there. I know I was messing around with some things out there today, like I was doing a bunch of RPOs and stuff that. Uh, you know, sometimes we were throwing it when we shouldn't, but you know, it, it, you know, Brady had a really good feel of handing it off and throwing it, uh, you know, based off of certain reads and certain looks. And uh, it's really like uh, where that kid has, where he's at right now and the control he has of the game, you know. And Tevit, Tevit's hilarious. He's awesome, man. Like, you know, there's, he had some unfortunate, like, things out there that occurred, you know, maybe like a false start or a hold or a, a missed block of some sort. And then he ended up still battling his way and talking about how he had to get something going. And uh, his last drive, he ended up moving down the field and scoring it. But Vit, Vitz, he's, man, he's he's awesome. Like just how he is in general. It's just he's he's so calm and cool out there. He's tough. Uh, those kids love playing for him. And and he uh, he just has a, a, a great mind, a great football mind, you know. And it's like he's he, it's like we're on the same page when we're out there, and uh, and that's what you see out of Brady and T. Bit now, Ty. I thought Ty finished out the the scrimmage pretty well in the last touchdown drive, and and uh, he's getting better every single day. The kid's got a great work ethic. He he knows that those other two quarterbacks have got a year on him, and uh, I can tell that he's out there just working through all the issues and and talking his way through things and. Um, I think he's going to have a bright future as well. But I, I think that there's three quarterbacks out there that you can go win games with. Uh, Coach, you know, this was kind of some of our first time getting to see Waydell Jones in action after he set out last year. He had the touchdown. It looked like he broke somebody's ankles in the one-on-ones. What do you feel like he's going to bring to this team this season? Yeah, and by the way, one-on-ones should go to the offense every single time. You know, like it, you know, you can sit there. Like, there's, there's bracket coverage and all that stuff as well. But uh, when you're out there for – the one-on-ones and you see Wade out do that, you know, it's just, it's good to see a new body out there, you know, cause he, he's got such a contagious spirit about himself. And like, wait till you guys talk with him and interview him and stuff. He's just, he's very optimistic. He gets out there. He, uh, he's just a great teammate. You know, even when he was sitting out last year cause he didn't have the, the waiver pass, he would be sending text messages to those guys on road games, you know, just trying to fire him up. And he's just a great teammate. And, uh, I'm, I'm glad you all got to see him make some plays out there because sometimes in the spring game the ball doesn't go uh, you know to certain guys at certain times but um, we tried to make it where you can have one-on-ones and and just kind of things to kind of get everybody an opportunity to get in front of the fan base but uh, Wade L did a he did a great job it was, it was fun to see him get in the end zone he got in twice didn't he I, mean, I know the back shoulder throw with Brady but just as one one yeah but he's He's, he's going to be a, a guy that's going to help out a lot, especially on the perimeter, because you got you got JB and Marcel that are, are proven, and you guys have seen him play a lot. And now you got TJ, and you can add Wade L in there to kind of take off uh, the load on those two guys. 
you know, defensively, you said you were down about 20 guys. E even with those numbers being so short, was there anything that you saw that you were happy with and what you think you guys need to get better? Yeah, it, it was a really great opportunity for the young, young guys. The Kenny Haynes and the Manuel Twins and Isaiah Nixon, uh, D. Marquise Hayes. Um, I think you saw all of them show up a lot, you know, and that was something I was pleased with. I know what Braden Stringer and Sione and, and Binky can do. Uh, Nico showed up too, which was, was a good thing, um, but, uh, but we know what he's capable of doing. But like what was really great for us was the evaluation of those young guys. And I think that, you know, those Emmanuel Twins and Kenny Haynes and Isaiah Nixon, they're going to be a, a solid group of guys moving forward because they're young. They all have really four more years of eligibility, and uh, I think uh, they're going to help out in some capacity if it's special teams or actually in a, a pretty crucial role on the defense. So it was, I was really pleased to watch those guys run around. It seemed like there were some D linemen, good number of D linemen missing mm -hmm. out there. There was. And they were, they were dog cussing me there for a little bit because they were running a lot of plays, you know, and uh, uh, which, you know, they, they, it is what it is. We were just kind of limited numbers and we just wanted to make sure we got our way through it all. But, um, you know, Nico, we ended up pulling him out too. You know, Nick McCann didn't go today. Uh, we, he went out and did a rep and was out and we just were kind of making sure that he's good and moving forward. And, you know, you had uh, Deontay Washington, which was good to see. He made some plays and, and showed up a few times. And Manny Galvin, I saw. Um, you know, Rebels was out there a little bit too. So, you know, it, it, we were limited um, at the D-line position. That's why we played a lot of three down. You know, we've been, we did sprinkle in some four down stuff that we've been playing a lot of, but we just, you know, from a personnel standpoint, we couldn't get to that because of uh, just the limited numbers of the D-line. And Morris too at corner, what, is he, he noticed he was missing too. Is he, is he injured? Or? Baby J, yeah, he, he's out for a contact trace. Oh, okay. Yeah, unfortunate. He's, I got to tell you, those kids are, they want to be out of here so bad, <laughs> you know, and be with their boys, but, you know, it's just today's time, and, you know, we just got to make sure we take care of them. Coach, you mentioned you had to pull McCann after that one rep, and, and I saw Jamil Jeter and Eric Sutton kind of had to be helped off the field. How did you guys come out of this health-wise? It was good. I just checked with Jeremy on the way out. Um, you know, there was, uh, you know, Jeet had a high ankle sprain which is, is common, it happens, you know, and the thing is those guys don't have to prove anything to me. You know, you know, they're more upset that they want to finish out the spring game, but, you know, I'm, I'm pulling them out. But, uh, you know, there are a bunch of soft tissue injuries. You know, we'll be, they'll be back in summer, you know, uh, probably give them a couple weeks off and go on vacation, you know, their little vacation time and then come back in uh, June and they should be ready to roll from there. You have four practices left this week. How mm -hmm. are you spacing those out? What's the schedule? We're going to go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We're going to go Monday through Thursday and just and just get some quality reps in. You know, again, like we couldn't go ones and twos today. We had just offense versus defense, and you just rotate your guys accordingly. <laughs> that's how we were. So, uh, you know, that's just that, that's just where we were at, and and uh, just due to you know the contact tracing and, and all the COVID protocols. So. You know, moving forward, it's still it's just whatever we got out there, we're going to rep and we'll get better because there's a lot of guys that you can pay individual attention to, and that's really what those last four practices uh, we're saving up for is just really installation, uh, working timing, continuity, and just you know getting coached individually. Uh, this spring game, it's a little bit of a different format than what kind of what most colleges do. Uh, what was the planning? In, what was the planning behind going into this spring game, and do you think this is a format y'all might use for the future? Yeah, like when I met with, uh, you know, really our marketing department, we were planning on doing a full-blown scrimmage. <laughs> but, uh, you know, last week, you know, and, you know Thursday, we, they are like, these are the guys that you can play with. And so we were like, how can we make it entertaining for all and not really wear our kids down completely? Because, you know, if we actually just went out there and didn't have any of the filler times of doing one-on-ones, like that scrimmage would be done in like 25 to 30 minutes. So we spaced that out over an hour and a half. And um, I actually kind of enjoyed watching those guys go around with it. It was good to see the kickers, you know, uh, Jacob Bates, you know, putting the ball in the 50-yard line, trying to kick a 60-yarder. It's, it's pretty fun to watch that. So, um, you know, I thought that was a good hour and a half of just giving everybody an opportunity to showcase their skills. You know, notice it's not a Texas State ad. Who, who are you repping up? No, this is Mike Harge. Uh, you guys know who Mike Harge is. Oh, yeah. Baseball yeah. he, uh, He's a big supporter of us, and, you know, um, he comes around a lot. And I've been wearing different hats every single day at practice. And, you know, he was the one that asked me. He gave me a hat yesterday if I'd wear it, and I said I would. <laughs> so, you know, it's, uh, he's a solid guy, man, and a, and a great supporter of us. Anybody else?
Appreciate it all.